Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making individual hazelnut fruit cakes. And I have to tell you a little secret. I hate fruit cake. <laughs> I really hate fruit cake. I even said this on a radio show publicly. I hate fruit cake, but I don't hate this one. This is a fruit cake I will eat. This is spectacular because it's soaked in hazelnut liqueur and it's sort of left to sort of soak up and get jiggy with all that beautifulness and all the flavors of the fruits and figs and it's spectacular. And we are going to make each one individual in little buntlet pans so you don't have to share with anybody. Great for the holidays, any holiday from Thanksgiving. Uh, it could be great for New Year's Eve or Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, any way you want to have it. This fruit cake is worth making and having. So we have to start with our batter first. I've preheated my oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And in my electric mixer, I'm going to put in one cup of granulated sugar, two and a half sticks of very room temperature butter, so it's soft, softened butter, and that is soft butter. And then I'm going to put it on medium, and we're going to cream it, you know, creaming it where the sugar sort of goes against the sides and sort of smears the butter and gets light and fluffy. Now this is a dense fruit cake. Most fruit cakes are dense. They could be used as like, uh, you know, to hold the door open. This one's sort of heavy too, but so delicious. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, and when you see the butter turn sort of sort of a paler yellow, almost a white, you are ready to go. You don't have to get it that light and fluffy. And when you're ready, you're going to take five eggs. You're going to crack them in some sort of a container. I like to put them in a liquid measuring cup because then I can check for shells. I don't want to put any shells in my fruitcake batter. Now, our dough, uh, our, not, it's not a dough yet, but our sugar and our butter are getting nice and creamed. So on lower speed, I'm going to get add one egg at a time. Let that incorporate. And then you're going to add the next egg. This is not the true creaming method of mixing, but um, we're going to be adding a few accoutrements, like a quarter cup mm, of hazelnut liqueur, but that's just the beginning of the liqueur. So that is going to go right in the batter. And then we soak these little luscious buntlets in more, in more liqueur, hazelnut liqueur. So once you get each egg in, So when I see a yolk go in, I sort of assume that's about an egg. Um, and then I stop and wait for the rest of it to be incorporated. Then my one quarter cup of hazelnut liqueur. There are many brands, so choose whichever one you like. And then you're going to take I'm going to make sure I'm doing this right because I'm, I'm, there's a lot of ingredients in here. Two cups of all-purpose flour, half a cup of cake flour to sort of lighten everything up because it's a dense cake, and a half a teaspoon of salt. So on very low speed, I'm going to add this. This is what makes our batter. Now, I'm not going to show you what's inside this bowl because we're going to take this bowl and I'm going to add this all to my egg, butter, and sugar mixture right now. And we're going to put it in a big bowl because, to be honest with you, all the additions to this glorious fruit cake will never fit in my electric mixing bowl. And I have a good size electric mixing bowl. But they don't fit because there's just so many of them. And wait till you see what's in this. This is a fruit cake anybody will love. And if you have a fruit cake hater like I was, I am a reformed fruitcake hater, but only for this fruitcake. I love this fruitcake. So not everyone likes the, the hard sort of, uh, you know, pre-made fruit that's sort of like hard and chewy and doesn't taste good. Well, this is different because this is all fresh 
Beautiful. You do it with your own hands. I'm going to give it one big whoop, and then we're done. So I'm going to show you it's a, be it's a beautiful batter. It's a beautiful batter in the neighborhood. All right. I'm going to just get all my batter out without putting my fingers in it. Normally, if you weren't with me, I'd put my fingers right through this paddle and clean it and clean off this paddle but no one wants to be watching me do that so i'm just going to get this luscious batter and i'll show it to you and i'm going to do what i always tell you to do take a big rubber spatula and go around and under to get all that flour all right you might see some on the bottom you might see some on the sides yep i heard you someone said it's in the back of the bowl i see it and then you're going to take this and you're going to put it in a very large bowl. A very large bowl. So I'm going to plop this out into a very large bowl. Woo! And it is beautiful. The batter is gorgeous. It's creamy looking. It almost looks like a buttercream. It's luscious. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? So now we have the piece de resistance, three cups of toasted, coarsely chopped hazelnuts. I tried to get as much of the skins off as possible. You can rub them with a kitchen towel. Sometimes not all of them come off. Who cares? It's delicious. It doesn't matter. A little extra fiber is not going to hurt anybody. I have a third of a cup of chopped small chop, like maybe quarter of an inch dice or maybe a little bit bigger, depending on how toothsome you like it. Crystallized ginger. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, I forgot a piece. Get in there. And then I have one and three quarter cups of finely minced figs. And if you don't like figs, don't say, oh, shutting off the video. Uh-uh. Stick with it. They're amazing. They sort of melt into the batter. They're so good. Now you see why I needed a big bowl? Now we're not done yet. Now, on a previous video, I made candied lemon peel. Now, I actually changed the lemons out for oranges and I made candied orange peel. It's luscious. And I chopped some up. Instead of buying the citron that you can get, you know, in a market somewhere or online, who wants that? I want homemade. I want stuff I know what's in it. So I took those beautiful candied orange peel, and I dice them one third cup. And then the rest I can chocolate dip and serve to friends during my, my company time. And you're gonna just fold this all together, all right? Now, there's one thing you may notice. You may say, uh-oh, Chef Gail, you forgot something. Well, what did I forget? Chemical leaveners. There's no baking powder. There's no baking soda, and there's certainly no yeast in here. Typical fruitcakes don't have chemical leaveners. That's why they're so heavy, all right? So when you say, take me out to the ball game and keep your eye on the ball, these are sort of heavy, sort of like a baseball, but they, oh my gosh, when you soak them in the hazelnut liqueur, they lighten right up, and they're just exquisite just exquisite. So once you get all your fruit, your nuts, your candied orange peel, and anything else you want to put in here, if you wanted to put in some dried cherries, if you wanted to put in some raisins or currants, have at it. Do it. You don't like figs, you like dates, do it. All right. So now I have my buntlet molds. This, these are about one cup capacity. I've sprayed them very heavily with nonstick cooking spray. Remember, my oven is preheated to 300, and I'm going to take a half a cup, like a, a solid measuring cup, and I'm just going to scoop out about a half a cup. This sort of lets me know about how much I can put in each one, and I'm going to fill each one about three quarters full, all right? So once you have this done, you're going to add more or less, depending on, I didn't even fill that whole half a cup. Uh, fully up there. You're going to take like a little tiny 
offset spatula, or you could take a spoon, you can take a butter knife, and just sort of move it around and flatten it so it's even. Okay, you see what I'm doing? And you're going to do that for every one. And you should, this only makes six. This will make 12. This whole recipe will make 12 bundlets. And you can freeze them. You can make half now, wait till tomorrow, make the other half. I'd make them all at once and serve whatever you need. And you may even need to make a double batch. Who knows how many people you may be having. So you're going to bake these once all of these bundlets are filled. And then I would take these out, remove them from the pan after about 15 minutes, and then bake the remainder off. So they're going to bake at 300 degrees for 45 minutes, just about exactly. You want a solid, you know, you want the cake to be solid. So you're going to put a small, sharp knife inside. And remember, there's a lot of stuff inside this cake. So it's going to be pretty solid. You know what they say about a fruit cake? It's basically just enough batter to hold the fruit and nuts together. So I'm going to continue filling my, my, my beautiful pan. I'm going to bake my bundlets off. 45 minutes, 300, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. See you back. So my individual hazelnut fruit cakes came out of the oven. I let them cool about 10, 15 minutes before I took them out. They should come right out. You may have to take a little knife and just go gently around the area where the bundlet area is, gets a little you know, convoluted and they should pop right out. If you don't have a bundlet pan, you can actually use a large muffin pan, you know, those extra large muffin pans or even a smaller muffin pan and just put down your uh, baking time about, about 10 minutes or so. All right, so these luscious creatures are gonna go in the pool. They're gonna go in a waiting pool of one and a half cups. That's not a typo, I did not say that wrong. One and a half cups of hazelnut liqueur. And you're gonna take your brush and you're going to take one of these beautiful babies and you're going to put it in and you're going to brush them. It's almost like they're going to the spa and you're just going to really saturate them. And you can put a few in at once. I could probably get four in here uh, at once. And you're just going to saturate them till they get nice. And they're not going to get super, super mushy uh, and spongy, but they will, you'll feel that they are soaked. Now, the first time I made these several versions ago, I used to take a little poker, like a little toothpick or a sharp little knife and make little holes in them. And I couldn't do it because there's so many nuts and figs and candy ginger and orange peel that I couldn't get the knife in. So I found just sending them to the spa for a few minutes for some TLC. Mm, I'm smelling that beautiful, beautiful, very fragrant hazelnut liqueur. Now what I'm going to do, because we're not totally ready to serve them yet, we're going to take little squares of foil, aluminum foil, and then I have an airtight container over here, and we're going to get them ready. So these can be made five days to seven days ahead of when you want to serve them. All right. And once you have soaked them for a few minutes, and everybody's been to the spa and soaked up as much luscious liqueur as they can. You're gonna put them in the aluminum foil and you're gonna gather it up. See you later. And you're just gonna tuck them in like that. All right. And you're gonna put them in an airtight container. And I'm gonna keep doing that with the remaining bundlets. I'm gonna put my top on, make it airtight, put it in my fridge for five days, seven days, and when I do want to serve them on that day, I'm going to take them out maybe three hours before I want to serve them, let them get to room temperature. And if you feel they're still too cold, sometimes I will put them in a low oven, very low oven, like 200, just to get the chill off because that's when the fragrance of that beautiful liqueur will come into play. So. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you do not hate fruitcake anymore like I don't. I love fruitcake and I love this fruitcake. And I hope you become a subscriber and I hope you make this fruitcake for all your holidays. Till next time, bye.